Hello and welcome to the DPN training course provided by Master CFT Company. During this course, we are gonna learn almost every practical information about the discrete phase model, which is applicable in many academic and industrial fields. The training course is divided into three main chapters. In chapter 1, we begin with the basics of discrete phase fundamentals, including the governing equations, life cycle, and requirements. Next, in the second chapter, we directly go to the ANSYS Fluent options for DPM module. It has been tried to investigate all widely used models that is needed for any CFT simulation. At last, four practical simulations will be performed. We begin the introduction chapter with the general question, what is a discrete phase? In fact, any flow consisting of two or more phases is called multiphase. From the analytical viewpoint, uh, we should deal with each phase based on its specifics and conditions. When there is at least one dispersed phase, we need to use the Lagrangian framework which is carried out by the DPM module in ANSYS Fluent. So we need to know first, uh, what is the discrete phase model? The discrete phase model is a computational fluid dynamics model used to simulate the motion and interaction of discrete solid or liquid particles suspended in a fluid. The DPM model tracks the motion of each individual particle as it moves through the fluid and calculates the forces acting on it due to the fluid flow and other particles. It is often used to model particle-laden flows such as particle-laden gases, sprays and suspensions. So up to now we claim that it is just like a multiphase, actually in the context of CFT or computational fluid dynamics simulations, the term secondary phase uh, refers to a phase of matter that is suspended or dispersed within a primary phase, which is typically a continuous phase or continuous fluid. This kind of multiphases must be tracked and analyzed in the Lagrangian framework indeed. And uh, this is the point of difference. Now let's take a look at widely used cases in which the discrete phase model is required. As mentioned before, one of the main applications of the DPM model is in the simulation of particle-laden flows such as particle-laden gases, sprays and suspensions. Some examples of this application include the design of spray nozzles, scrubbers, combustion chambers, cyclones and pipelines, and the optimization of gas-solid reactions, and the prediction of particle de uh, deposition and erosion in gas turbines. Alright, as mentioned earlier, we must track the discrete phase in the Lagrangian framework. So what is Lagrangian framework? The Lagrangian frame of reference is a way of describing the motion of the secondary phase particles in a CFT simulation. In this frame of reference, the particles are treated as individual entities and that follow their own trajectories as they move through the flow. The motion of each particle is tracked over time and the forces acting on it are calculated based on the fluid flow and other particles in the vicinity. One of the major advantages of the Lagrangian frame of reference is that it allows for a detailed description of the motion and interaction of individual particles within the flow. On the other side of the story, we should consider that this leads to higher accuracy but higher computational costs in contrast with other multiphase models. To sum up, this option can be particularly useful when modeling complex phenomena such as particle-particle and particle-wall collisions, particle breakage and fragmentation, and particle fluid heat and mass transfer. Actually, in this slide, we're gonna talk a little about the pros and cons of a discrete phase model. Uh, in a DPM simulation, the fluid and the particles are treated as separate phases, and the particles are represented as discrete entities that attract individually as they move through the flow. The motion of the particles is governed by the forces acting on them, including the drag force, the lift force, and the gravitational force. The fluid phase is modeled using the Navier-Stokes equations which describe the conservation of mass, momentum, and energy in the flow. 
One advantage of DPM is that it is generally easier to implement compared to the other uh, modeling approaches such as DDPM or uh, dense discrete phase model. Uh, this is because DPM only requires the simulation of a single phase, uh, which is the particles, rather than two phases, I mean the particles and the fluid. As a result, DPM simulation can be more computationally efficient and be, may be more suitable for use in the cases where the computational resources are limited. However, DPM has some limitations compared to the other models' approaches. For example, DPM may not be as accurate in predicting the behavior of the particles in certain situations, particularly when the particles are closely packed or when there are strong interactions between the particles and the uh, fluid. In this kind of cases, more advanced modeling approaches such as DDPM may be more appropriate. DDPM or dense discrete phase model is a variant of DPM that is used to simulate the behavior of dense particle system uh, where the particles are closely packed and interact strongly with the fluid. In the DDPM simulation, the particles are represented using a two-fluid model in which the particles are treated as a separate fluid phase that it interacts with the continuous phase. This allows the simulation to capture the transfer of momentum, heat, and mass between the two phases, which can be important in dense particulate systems. We will delve into it deeply in a separate course. For now, just note that, as a rule of thumb, when the secondary phase concentration is more than 10 or 12%, we assume it as a dense phase and put DDPM in the priority for simulation. In this slide, we are going to talk about a very crucial issue. It is the basis of the assumption of each DPM case. Generally, ANSYS fluent can ignore the effect of the interaction of the particles with the continuous phase or consider the interaction as well. There is also a supplementary submodel in which the interactions between the particles are also taken into account. When the volume fraction of the discrete phase is low, the continuous phase is dominant in the motion. Thus, the impact of the disparate phase on the continuous phase can be ignored. It is called the one-way coupling method. It can be applicable to many numerical projects like where we are dealing with submicron particles or where the flow rate is very low. Of course, they cannot affect the continuous phase motion. As the dispersed phase concentration increases, not only the continuous phase, but the dispersed phase motion can also affect the continuous phase flow. Thus, the one-way coupling method cannot satisfy the problem condition. In these cases, the two-way coupling method is the wise and accurate one. So let's see how it works. The above chart is the general form of solving a two-way DPM problem. First, the continuous phase is solved by the Eulerian view. Next, the discrete phase is calculated to track each particle and find its new position. Then, the interactions are applied in the continuous phase equation via source terms. The process is repeated and the source term updates until it reaches convergence. Finally, if the particle-particle collisions are taken into account, the most accurate simulation is carried out. But notice that it will increase the computational cost drastically. A particle's life cycle starts at the moment injection occurs, then passes through the elements and finally reaches a boundary or its fate somehow finishes. The injection point is the initial point where the particle is injected into the domain. After passing through the cell, which is called previous cell, the particle gets to the boundary between the previous and current cell, while its properties update. The particle is at the previous cell's exit surface and entry of the current cell. At this point, the particle passes through the exit surface of the current cell, and enters the next one while its position and properties are updated based on the defined time step. In the end, the trajectory of the discrete phase will finish in different probabilities depending on the boundary condition. We will talk about it more later. Now we want to seek for the governing equations. The governing equation is based on Newton's second law. Uh, as you can see, the mp is the particle mass, the up is the particle velocity, f drag is the drag forces acting on the particle, and f gravitation is the gravity force, and f other is the other forces acting on the particle, including the pressure gradient, Safman, thermophoric, 
virtual mass, bronian, rotational forces, and etc. In this equation, the particle velocity is the unknown calculated for each particle. It is used to compute time step size, then the continuous phase source terms need to be updated. Notice that in the one-way method, the effect of particle motion on the continuous phase is ignored, so the source term keeps zero. In other cases, all the couplings are applied through the source terms, including particle motion effect, species and mass transport for evaporation, momentum changes for phases, and so on. For now, just consider the general form of the equation. As the particles are injected, the velocity and location should be determined in every time step in order to track them. There are two governing equations in particle transfer from current to next point. After integration over time from the second equation, velocity and location of particle could be cut in the next step. In the final slide of the introduction chapter, we want to talk a little about Gritz's independence. In numerical studies, the governing equations are discretized and rewritten in each cell. To have an exact safety solution, we must generate an appropriate mesh grid to accurately capture variables value in each cell. A grid independence study should be done to avoid any possible divergence or wrong solution. Therefore, we need to perform a mesh grid with different sizes while monitoring an important parameter as a result. As the parameter value fluctuations gets into an acceptable range, the solution becomes independent of the mesh grid. From another perspective, we are not allowed to decrease the size of elements too much because it can cause an error in the simulation itself. Additionally, there is another limitation to the discrete phase model. A very small grid would also disrupt. As mentioned before, the volume fraction of particles cannot be more than 10 to 12% because the interaction between the particles or bubbles are neglected in the Lagrangian model. All in all, what should we do now? As a rule of thumb, we want to suggest you that uh, consider that the cell size must be 10 times the diameter of the parcel, at least. To benefit from master safety services, including simulation, consultation, and training, visit our website www.mastercfd.com and contact us via info at mastercfd.com.